What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are assembling February's PC of the month. This is gonna be insane. The objective of today's build is to cram just about as much power and speed into a small, small, tiny, little itty bitty footprint. And we're gonna be doing that by way of the Encase M1, a chassis that I've had my eye on since the day it ever arrived on the internet. I saw this a couple years back and I was like, I need it, but I never got a chance to actually get one. It was just very hard to find by the time I tried looking for one and I just, I just never, I just never got around to building one. Fortunately, my good old buddy and pal Crafty Hack offered to send me his as a loner so that I could do a build with one. So that's very nice of him. Thank you so much, Crafty. Go ahead and follow him on Twitter. He'll totally send you any case you want. Crafty also sent me the replacement panel so that you can actually make the case either black or silver to your liking, and I really couldn't decide, so I threw up a poll on Twitter, and even though it was really close, in the end, you guys voted for black. So we're gonna be building in a black NKSM M1 for today. Our CPU of choice that we're rocking today is none other than the Intel Core i7 7700K KB Lake processor. This is a quad-core chip that is hyper-threaded, so we got eight threads on this bad boy, which is not gonna be just great for gaming, but also multi-threaded applications like video editing as well. This is almost chalking up to be a 2.0 version of the Go Anywhere Do Anything PC that I did not too long ago, sometime last year, uh, with the Fractal Design Node 202. This, uh, this system that we're building today is definitely gonna give that one a run for its money. On top of that, we're also slotting that CPU into a beautiful motherboard. This is the Asus Strix Z270i Gaming Mini ITX MOBO. And this is one of the boards that I saw at CES that I was just super, super fond of. I was like, this is a nice board. I want one, Gary. And Gary was like, I'm gonna give it to you. And then uh, now I have one. So now I get to build with it. I'm very excited. It features RGB aura lighting, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's got an RGB header on it as well. Even a USB 3.1 header, which is really nice for a mini ITX board for sure. It's also got M.2 NVMe support so this is a full featured board that looks really nice as well it's got a kind of a neutral color scheme with some silver accents so it's sure to match all the other components in our system moving right along i've got to give a huge shout out to the folks over at occ for hooking it up with a killer storage selection for today's build we'll be using their flagship m.2 nvme drive which is their rd400 and that's in a one terabyte capacity this thing is an absolute beast it gets up to 2600 megabytes per second sequential reads and 1.6 or i should say 1600 100 megabytes per second sequential writes, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, so we're gonna be using that today for mainly our scratch disk. If we are gonna be editing, it's nice to have really fast sequential writes for sure. And then on top of that, we're also rocking one of their uh, VX500 drives. This is just a SATA, simple two and a half inch drive, but still does a really good job as a boot drive and just uh, loading up basic applications in our operating system. For memory, we've got 16 gigs or a two by eight gig kit of Corsair Dominator Platinums at 3000 megahertz. These this is actually the same sticks that I used in January's PC of the month, but I just thought I would carry them over for this month because they're gonna look really nice with this motherboard and the other components that we've got in here. Plus they're just really reliable and fast sticks. Next up, we've got the Corsair H100i GTX V2, which is a 240 millimeter liquid AIO that we are gonna be stuffing inside of the Encase M1. I am super excited to do this. If we're gonna be overclocking the 7700K, which can hit easily five gigahertz and get fairly hot by doing that, we are gonna need some nice cooling potential in there. So this is gonna be keeping thermals in check, hopefully, and allowing us to hit some decent overclocks without throttling. Rounding things out here, we've got a 600 watt SFX series power supply from good old Silverstone. This is an awesome unit that's 80 plus gold and fully modular with flat black cables. So none of, none of that nasty ketchup and mustard that we're used to seeing sometimes on Pit My PC and things like that. This is a really solid and very reliable unit. I've never had any issues with the 500 watt model that I used in my wall mounted overkill console killer build that I did a few years back. So very excited to be using this one today. And last but certainly not least is our graphical weapon of choice, which is the GTX 1070 Mini from Gigabyte. Now, I specifically wanted this card because it's super short. The PCB on it is probably no more than six inches long, uh, and yet it has a very decent cooler on it for the size. Um, it only has one single fan, but as we'll probably see in part two of this video when I do thermal testing and things like that, uh, I've read several reviews that have all praised how effective this little cooler is for being the size that it is and being able to pack in that much horsepower a la the GTX 1070 is exactly what we're going for for today's build. So. Those are all the parts, guys. There's no uh, cable sleeving in this one because it's already pretty cramped in the M1, plus the, the matte black cables on the, uh, the SFX unit are just fine. But all that aside, I'm just super pumped to be building this little tiny rig featuring the phenomenal lineup of hardware behind me. By the way, I'll put links in the description below for all the stuff that's there uh, if you want to check it out. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Sit back, relax, maybe say a prayer to the PC gods for me as I build this thing, and I'll see y'all on the other side.
So here she is, here's the build, pretty straightforward. And I got the beer bottle out there just for scale so you can really get a feel for how tiny this case really is. Um, it was surprisingly easy to work in despite being such a tiny compact area. Um, you can see here, this is probably the most cramped angle, cramped looking angle of the entire build is from the top down. Uh, you can see that the radiator went in no problem. There's still actually a bunch of clearance for the fans, but what I overlooked was that the H100i GTX V2 has some really thick tubes um, that I didn't account for. So it was actually really hard trying to press down this, uh, this side panel radiator uh, bracket uh, and get that all screwed in properly because those tubes were just so thick. And of course they're long, they're, they're long for a case this size. So I'll have to um, take that into consideration next time I'm building in something like this. Uh, but other than that, everything went pretty smoothly. You can see I've got a, actually an Allen wrench that's just being used as a crutch right now uh, to prop up one of those tubes because it was pushing down on the PCB of the graphics card and actually pressurizing a little bit more flex than I would have liked it to. So uh, the Allen wrench is just there as a temporary fix to keep things uh, upright. Um, and then uh, you can see I've also, I also added in a Cougar fan. This is just a 120 millimeter Cougar fan. These are really quiet and very well performing. I've had this fan for like five years, but I haven't used it in probably four, but uh, that's just provided as an intake, getting some fresh airflow to the graphics card, just to hopefully lower the thermals a bit more than otherwise. And uh, everything else was good. The M.2 SSD went in there, no problem. Everything went in just very smoothly, so I'm happy how this went. Guys, let me know if you would like me to try my hand at custom water cooling inside of this thing. I know it's been done before. I've looked up the Google images and I've seen some pretty nice looking builds. Um, and uh, actually, Crafty sent me this along with the uh, along with uh, the case, which is a, a dedicated um, reservoir that is tailor-made for the N-Case M1, and it actually mounts to the outside of the case on the back, like so. And then you can uh, route some tubes through the, uh, the water cooling grommets there. Uh, I guess the only challenge then would be finding places for the radiators, which I would imagine would go at the bottom of the case, uh, and then of course the pump. Uh, the pump would probably maybe have to mount at the front somewhere. I'd have to get creative with it. Or you can get one of those water blocks that have a built-in pump. That, that could be a solution too. But uh, you can see there's really minimal space here for a radiator. I mean, there, this is just a 120 fan right here. And we, we've already got like just a couple millimeters of clearance between the fan and the graphics card. But bear in mind, if we put a custom block on the 1080 or any card for that matter, uh, for the most part, you're gonna be uh, minimizing or, or lessening the width of that card. So it would actually be a single slot card, more or less, and that would give us a little bit more clearance at the bottom for a radiator and maybe some slim fans. So I'll have to I'll have to go back to the drawing board for that one, but let me know if, you, if that's something you'd like to see. But I think that's pretty much gonna do it for now, guys. Be sure to stay tuned for part two where I test acoustics, thermals, and of course gaming benchmarks with this guy. I think it's gonna be pretty exciting to see how much power we can drive out of this little tiny, tiny little system here. So this was a lot of fun. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like, the video, hold on, whoa, hold on. I really need a cameraman. Be sure to like the video if you guys enjoyed it and also feel free to subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, I promise. Have a good one guys, and I'll see y'all in the next video.